January 1988. The military situation in southeastern Angola is a tense one. The danger of a large-scale attack by South Africa is there. Fresh Cuban troops and equipment are arriving at various Angolan ports and airports. This is in response to requests from the Luanda government and the leaders of the popular movement for the liberation of Angola Labor Party. From the points of disembarkment, the Cuban reinforcements continued their trip without wasting a single minute. Those who arrived in Luanda were taken to Malange and Wambo, where some other units of the South African of the Southern troops were located. Other groups joined these, coming from the port of Benguela. The increase in men and equipment made it easier to quickly form detachments in Luena province. Meanwhile, in Quito, Guanabal, the South African racists persisted in their artillery harassment of the defense lines established there by the Angolan army troops and 300 Cuban military advisors. At first, the enemy had been able to choose the area of combat, favorable to them, of course. The challenge was accepted because the enemy had to be stopped at all costs. However, at the same time, it was decided to strengthen our contingent and move deep into the southwest front in the direction of the Namibian border. With the arrival of the new Cuban reinforcements and equipment, the correlation of forces on the scene of battle substantially changed. The enemy now would need many more resources in case of an attack. Air and anti-aircraft superiority belong to the joint forces of Angola, Cuba, and the Swapo Liberation Movement. In Angola, a situation arose very similar to that of 1975, when South Africa invaded the country using its superior war resources. Cuba had up to 36,000 men there, in keeping with the mutual agreement adopted by the two governments and parties. This time, the roads and highways extending to the south were once again covered by interminable caravans. The objective now was to reinforce our units. The march was not always easy. Various obstacles had to be surmounted. In Angola, as in the rest of the southern hemisphere, January is a month of constant rains and even big tornadoes. The weather conditions caused a complex situation and complex consequences for this type of activity. Rivers overflowed, bridges collapsed, roads became impassable. This situation favored the activities of the internal enemy of the Angolan people, the bandits of the puppet UNITA. Small groups mined the access routes and roads likely to be used. It was necessary to devote a great deal of time to terrain recognizance. This made progress very slow. Once in a while, despite all the security measures taken, accidents occurred because of the mines. This made the line of armored cars and vehicles stop for hours. However, no matter how difficult the obstacles, no matter how unfamiliar the roads, the process of reinforcing the troops and their equipment in the south continued to take its course.